What's up everybody? So the response I got to yesterday's video about Kathleen Zellner blocking Ken Kratz on X was absolutely tremendous. The amount of messages and DMs I got and then reading through the YouTube comments themselves just show how many people are so passionate about this case. To me, it doesn't matter which side of the fence you are on. I just love seeing the debate because there are so many people with so much knowledge on this case and they can get it so quick. It doesn't matter the question you ask from either side, there is always somebody out there that is able to get you the answer to your question seemingly at a moment's notice and that is absolutely tremendous to me um, and also I'll never just allow one side of the conversation I know there's a lot of people out there that just like discussing the version of events they believe and I'm not just talking about this particular case uh, it goes about any topic or any discussion in life, true crime, politics, sports, whatever. People just want to talk about the narrative that they want to believe, the narrative they want to discuss. And that's not something I believe. To me, it doesn't matter uh, whether I think somebody is guilty or innocent or if you're left wing or right wing whatever it doesn't matter i am always going to allow both sides of the discussion both sides of the conversation there's always two sides to a story the truth is generally somewhere in the middle as well from my experience but there's always two sides to a story and i'm always going to allow both sides of the discussion no matter what i think of either side. If I think somebody is innocent and this person thinks they're guilty, who am I to say that this person's point of view shouldn't be heard anyway? That's not up to me. I will always allow both sides of the discussion. You don't need to believe both sides, but I will always attempt to share both sides of the discussion. Ken Kratz posted on X yesterday. And then let me know what you guys think of these. He states, uh, this is from yesterday, I believe, they're all from the last day or two. This one states, on February 14th, 2007, Stephen Avery's defense attorneys brought a motion for the mistrial, claiming that the state was at fault in failing to notify the defense about a joke Stephen Avery told Bobby and his friend Mike. Making a murderer turned the scene into a dramatic event in the Avery trial, supposedly showing the state's misconduct in its discovery obligations. And he posts his trial journal. The handwriting is atrocious. It's like a, I don't know what it is with these people. Lawyers, doctors, you can never read anything. Any, have you ever looked at your prescription and tried to read what your doctor writes? It just looks like, at least where I am, it just looks like a bunch of squiggly lines. I have no idea how anyone knows what exactly anyone is supposed to get. But anyway, and that's a lot like this is. February 14th, 2007, I recount the event, already noting the defense got reports describing the joke. Perhaps they didn't read them and got a jail call from January 29th, 2006, consisting of Aunt Ma and Stephen discussion the joke. Well, Jerry Buting, here's your chance to apologize. Now, I will say, there's a lot of people speculating out there that this journal wasn't actually written at the time he says it was. A lot of people think this was written post-trial because of how he has worded some things. Um, so that is a narrative that is out there about this journal. It was, that is so hard to read. If they ever release this entire journal, I'm going to have to read it five or six times before I even attempt to make a video about it because some of these words are, to me, just not legible. And then someone responds, and then someone responds, Avery Wave, uh, Avery Wave 80194, again, another person with so much information on the case. I will link their X account in the description below. How dare you try to lie to everyone here? The problem with you offering the body joke was that it was materially different from what Mike told LE. You try to have the jury hear it happened on the 3rd. Jerry Buting had to mop up your mess. The phone call is irrelevant to that. And then Ken Kratz replies with, What day do you think it was uttered? If not Thursday the 3rd, Avery Wave was says, Are you joking? Ken Kratz says, What day? 
quit deflecting, and then Avery Wave replies with, it was said on the 4th, and then shows a document that shows it was said on the 4th at the bottom of the screen there. Sapper Cop 20003. I'm going to link everybody's ex's account that I talk about in this video in the description below, so you will be able to find them all there. It says, once a liar, always a liar. He just lied about not ordering any burn. He just lied about not ordering any burn barrels to be returned to the Avery Salvage Yard, except he did. Ken Kratz replied with, I ordered them returned from the Avery Salvage Yard. Don't, don't you think that's exactly opposite what you are crowing about? And then he starts, there's discussion about a phone call. Oh, and by the way, here's the call. Still say the defense had no idea what Bobby was recalling about the hide a body joke. Come on, Jerry Buting fans. Time to admit you were intentionally lied to. And then he links a copy of the call to X. Uh, jail call dated uh, January 29th, 2016. This person, KMFBD, states the call doesn't give them notice that Bobby will testify to hearing Stephen Avery saying, do you want to burn a body? What discovery did you provide them that Bobby was going to testify to this comment? You, Kenkrat states, you have no idea how idiotic that sounds. I will just invite you to talk to any trial lawyer and ask if any discovery obligation in any trial requires one side to identify the questions you will ask. Bless your heart. Uh, case 10 on X states, you did a podcast in 2017 and you mentioned that in 2008, the Making a Murderer filmmakers had a short film about the case. Did you ever get a chance to see that? He replies with, sadly, no, the filmmakers and Columbia University who hosted the film festival at which it was shown, I got, I would be extremely interested in seeing this, blocked it from being released. Recently said, if you have nothing to hide, you hide nothing. Several times this past week, I have been reminded of that. Fraud is not about the result, what was stolen or achieved throughout nefarious means. It's about the intentional deception deployed. Without fraud would be impossible. Look for the slime balls who fight both tooth and nail to prevent any sort of transparency. These same groups, including government agencies denying clear public records, will smugly say you haven't provided any misconduct while simultaneously preventing any look that would prove it. Uh, Duke Juke 11 states, gotta love seeing Ken Kratz uncancelled get caught red-handed lying about the burn barrels. It absolutely confirms our suspicion that evidence was manipulated. Ken Kratz states, you asked me a question, you already have the answer. I wanted all of the evidence back at the Sheriff's Department. So your point is, question mark, you, that you look like a child trying to stump me or that you have a warm glow about you because your stump the brand of Ken Kratz was a rocking success. Wanna play stumped the wanna play stump the band with me? I can ask you a question, and if you don't know the answer, I can bask in result. How rewarding. Enjoy your victory, and please don't hesitate to tell your friends. That's everything that it seems Ken Kratz posted within the last couple of days. Let me know. What do you think? Hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.